Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends, welcome back to the channel, and today we have, as always, this week's chapter of One Piece 982, of its name, Scoundrel Meets Scoundrel, and I gotta say, right off the bat, this was a fun cover, I mean, unexpected, at least the semblance of, of the characters, because you'd expect that one of the pairs would be inverted, but no. So the Marine came, and they're attacking, and they are running. But it's Chiffon that's carrying Beiji, and I am like, well, that was fun. <laughs> It is it is a fun it is a fun cover if nothing else it's not anything major they're running from the navy there could be easy, an easier way for them to run away like literally we don't know what happened to the risky brothers they're not in this cover uh, anymore but there were easier ways for them to run away they could have all gotten inside Beiji and just Beiji ran off with the tank but I guess it was made to be funny. And Goatee, our man Goatee, carrying his lady in his arms like a proper man would do. I applaud you, Goatee, I applaud you. But yes, volume 28, Run Away from the Navy. Again, this cover story, it's meh. From here on out, it's, it's meh, really. Pound is also arriving at, at Green Beat. Or dress rose at the very least, but he was seen closer to Green Beat. So uh, probably they'll meet up sometime later. Maybe the next, maybe volume 29, it's him arriving and punching the Navy in the face. Or maybe we'll have another, 29 will be something else and then 30 will appear and, uh, and punch the Navy. But yeah, they'll meet up. It's being set up for that. And I believe that four more volumes, five more volumes of this cover story and then we're done because honestly, at this point I don't see where else this cover page could go. Like, the big thing can still happen, like normally some cover pages have big things in them, like NL's cover page, um, Gene Base cover page. There are some that don't have anything at all big, like Gadatsu's and Baggy's cover page, so, and even Kobe and El Mapu's, that was just, it didn't have anything major from the story, it was more of an evolution of the character, and Beiji got his own due to his, due to his own uh, participation in Whole Cake Island, so I guess that's okay, but let us move forward with the chapter. We see that Black Maria decided to stay behind, and I've seen that a lot of people are considering this to they, people are considering Black Maria to be on the same status as uh, Stussy from CP0 in like she's infiltrated in the, the Beast Pirates so she can spy on them well no matter how interesting that could be like i don't think oda will just repeat tropes like that because yeah introduce sexy lady number two or well number two in this scenario i hope the light is okay because it's cloudy here today i don't understand but uh introduce sexy lady number two in random pirate slash underworld group number whatever and be have her be a spy like it would be interesting sure but then again i don't think that that's the case like i think for me that black maria just wants to have fun all kinds of fun you know all kinds of fun, I repeat, because yeah, we saw last chapter that she runs the brothel in Onigashima, so I, for me, she's just a lecherous woman that revels in 
that kind of thing and she doesn't want to be an all-star she just she, she doesn't want to go up the scale she's probably powerful enough to keep her position as a Tobiropo secured like imagine the beast pirates were not <laughs> i'm gonna say this and it's gonna sound funny imagine the beast pirates weren't in danger as if they are in any real danger well they are because we know they're gonna have to be defeated but you know what i mean Imagine if the Beast Pirates were not in danger and they would get to rule over Wano for years and years to come. Yeah, I, I say that Black Maria is most, more than likely powerful enough to keep her position as Toby Ropu secure. And she doesn't want to be an old star. She just wants to stay as a Toby Ropu, run her brothel and have fun. That's why she hasn't gone off to find Yamato. She has no interest in that. She just wanna she just wants to stay and party with Kaido and maybe get on that sweet fun with him. But yes, we see her, Kaido, and Orochi all partying. Kaido even says, What about your task? Ah, and she's like, oh let it go, Supreme Commander. They 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 can handle it. I I'm j i am just I can I, I'd rather be here with you. And he's like, okay, I don't mind. Yeah, if it was any of the others, he would mind. But since it's Black Maria, he doesn't mind at all. You know what I mean? He does not mind at all. But yeah, Orochi's there, they're drinking. Orochi thinks everything's okay because the Kozukis are finally defeated. Little does he know. And little did we know that right off the bat, Kanjuro appears with Momoros K in hand. And poor little thing, it appears that he tried to escape... That knife we saw him eyeing a few chapters back, it appears he tried to cut these ropes with it and Kanjuro just had to beat him. Man, this... Kanjuro just beat Momorosuke just like that. Just, that's just how... I don't even know how to phrase this, just how good of an actor he was. Like, to make us think that he was worried about him and then all of a sudden he's just able to beat him i mean boof that that is cold kanjuro that is cold but yeah he breaks into the manor just like that uh, defeats another handful of guys kaido berates them because yeah this is all just a messy a messy introduction really because all of a sudden, this guy comes on, when a party is going on, it just comes on and boom. Like, just like that. You think that there could have been some more preparations for his arrival. Like, his delay served no other purpose than to allow the scabbards and the alliance to arrive at Onigashima and not meet any heavy resistance. Because if Kanjuro had arrived at Orochi at that moment, things wouldn't have turned out as, as they have, honestly. And so his delay served no other purpose than that, because this, this could have happened in many different ways, because Orochi had his men, like after the 20-year 20, the 20 time jump, he could have gone to Kaido and said, you see this guy? This guy is my spy, so like have your men treat him the same way, but whenever the time comes, have them remember that this guy is like a friend. Or even, he could have done that even on the, on the day of the fire festival, like it didn't need to be any earlier than that. On the day of the fire festival, before getting there, Orochi could have sent a message saying, well, pass this picture around, this painting around, of this guy with these characteristics. This guy is a friend. He's going to betray his men today and he's going to come here, so he's a friend. He should have done that, but I guess Oda needed to make him late so that the scabbards and everyone else could appear. And they even discuss this because Orochi starts panicking because apparently the scabbards are still alive and they arrived at Onigashima 
To which Fukuroku just comes and don't worry, Lord, there are no ships here, but the ships we sent have not returned yet, and there's four pirates in here today, so it's highly likely that they are here. And they are, yes. So, yeah. The thing is, Fukurokuju says there's not a single ship to be seen at the dock. We do know that at least the at least the Thousand Sunny and the Victoria Punk are safe. Like at least those two. So at least those two are safe. The thing is, if they're not at the dock, they can't be that far. Like so Unless they are super well hidden that not even Fukuroku Joe and his men can find it. Or they haven't searched everywhere, because you can't just hide two ships like the like the Thousand Sunny and the Victoria Punk just like that. I mean these are not your run-of-the-mill ships, you know. But yeah. Um another interesting thing is the exchange between uh, Kaido, Kanjuro, Orochi, and uh, quote-unquote Momonosuke, to where Kaido just... I, I don't know what to say of this. Like, what was he expecting? Kaido expresses disappointment over Momonosuke still looking the same, but, I mean, what... What did he expect? Like, it may have... 20 years may have passed for him and all the others. But, uh... For them? Like, at most... Two or three months. Like, at most. If we take into consideration that Russ Rosa, Whole Cake Island, Zoe... Everything happened in between. And plus all the days that that I've spent in, in one already. Like, okay, maybe not three months, but close to two months have passed for him, like, and all the other scabbards that went with him, Kanjuro included. So, of course, Momonosuke would be the same. And especially now that he was beaten by by Kanjuro, he's, he's a kid. He's an eight-year-old kid. He's defeated. Of course he is. He's, he's not supposed to not be that way. I I mean yeah I, I I don't know what Kaido expected honestly I found this I found this this dialogue of his to be a bit well what were you expecting man like yeah we have a flashback to the scene where we hanged him from the roof again long leg Kaido again I really want to know what the heck was with Kaido that those days because poof I really don't know like how does he go from being that to being this in terms of legs probably not the best analogy but it's pretty close like he goes from being this to this in legs like I I don't understand but yeah there's the whole talk with the with this, the void century thing that yeah he's wait is that here maybe not i remember reading that i remember reading that kaido mentioned something Along the lines of the... Oh, it was before, yeah. Yeah, he says, It's too bad, though, if a man who was so utterly trusted claims that Oda never told him anything. Yeah. So, yeah. Kaido was still looking forward to... To hearing about laughter from the... From the, from the samurai. From the... The scabbards. Which... Makes me think that Odin's journal will still have a role to play. 
because we know we kept a journal. We don't know, however, is how where his journal is. And I think that that journal will appear, one way or another. Maybe not in the hands of Kaido, but I can imagine that book appearing by like Kiori or maybe even Denjiro having it hidden somewhere. And at the end of all these, whoever survives, they go and give the book to Momo and Hiori. So Hiori doesn't have it. Someone else has it. Denjiro. Let's make it Denjiro. Denjiro has the book. Denjiro has the diary somehow. And after everything is said and done, maybe, probably, someone has died. Most likely Kinemon. And Denjiro goes and gives the journal to Hiori and Momonosuke. Tells, tells them, this is your father's journal. It has its whole life written in here, so please cherish it. And I don't know, by some stroke of fate, Momo decides, well, I don't want it. Uh, Hiyori says the same. And like, they decide, for some reason, to give it to Luffy. Because it contains information about Laugh Tale and how to get there, about the Void Century, most likely. And Luffy just go like, hell no, I don't want that. They'll be lucky enough if he doesn't destroy the damn thing. Which I don't think he would do, because it's one thing to refuse, it's another thing to, re to destroy a man's whole life. He'll be like, he could be like, well, even if you don't want to read it now, keep it. Like, I don't want to know what's in there. He's your father, I... I don't want anything to do. I don't want to know anything. Dude, I refused the first mate of the Roger Pirates telling us everything about Laugh Tale and Void Century. You think I'm going to read from a journal? Like, dude, just, just keep the damn thing. And yeah, the book will stay in Wano, probably be considered one of the national treasures as well. And, um... And maybe one day we'll get to find more about what's in the book. Which, honestly, I doubt it. Because I believe we're not getting any more Odin flashbacks now. And if we are to have them in the future, we'll be way close to Laugh Tale. And it won't be anything on the scope. It won't be Odin-centered. Odin will appear, of course, because when we eventually get Roger's flashback... Odin will have to be there. Now that we know he was there, he'll have to be there. So, we'll see, we'll see. But anyway, let's move forward. Uh, Black Maria attempts to comfort Momorosuke. I mean, I don't really th I don't think comfort is the best word here, but she attempts some pity on the boy. And yeah, Kanjo informs them about everything. Fukuroku Joe appears. I love the faces Oda gave. In, Fuku in Fukurokuju's description of the of Luffy, Zoro, Kid, and Killer, because <laughs> they're all with this black, uh, with this white devil eyes and the, the pointy teeth. And Killer's mask, Killer's is on his mask, which is very amusing. And yeah, Orochi's just completely freaked out at this point, as he would be. And he takes Momorosuke out of Black Maria's lap. And he says, arrange a crucifixion stand on the stage. <sighs> of course, Momonosuke will not die. I believe Oda wouldn't do that. I mean, that's quite, that's quite the distance there. But he will put Momonosuke on a cross. That much I believe you'll do. Like, if not next chapter, then in the in the near future, we will sadly see Momorosuke in a cross. And that's gonna be a pretty 
grim imagery, I believe. But we'll see. The action changes to the seas near Onigashima, where we we are we go we go back to the polar tank, and we see the rest of the scabbards talking with Nekomamushi. It's interesting because we were expecting to see more of Nekomamushi, but we didn't get to see much of him. There's a, there's a talk between him and the other scabbards, and it just hangs up, and they all talk about how we haven't changed. And so yeah, again, Law speaking of the currents, that would be difficult for a ship to approach. And yeah, they just... Typical banter stuff. Then we change again to the seas, but to Nekomamushi's ship. And I gotta say, and I have said this a lot, at this point the list is enormous. I want Nekomamushi's ship as a model kit. I mean... Please? <laughs> I've asked for the supernovas, and those are seven already, so Nekomamushi's is eight. That's as much as my collection, yeah. I mean, I have almost all the model kids, except Teach's dinghy, Ace's paid pirate ship, and, um, and Anel's Ark, so... I mean... I really would like for the supernova ships to be made into model kits, and I was surprised that they didn't capitalize on that for Stampede, because that would have been cool if they'd done that. But I'm not the manufacturer here, so I really hope the lighting is okay, God damn it. But yeah, we see the Guardians and Marco speaking with Nekomamushi. It's really interesting to see this, because... Nekomamushi had a note from Marco to give to Luffy. The note said, I might be late, but I'll be there. So, Marco had the intention to go there. However, he was gonna go later. But now he's here. Like, we need to know exactly why he changed his mind. Because he had intentions to go, just not then and there. Sorry about the cut, I have to sneeze. But uh, he had intentions to go, just not then and there. So why, what made him change his mind? But yeah, we see probably Izo again, just by his leg. And uh, we, yeah, this is just a bit of banter. Uh, Marco explains that he he had no idea things were this bad because news don't travel outside of Wano. Like even Izo couldn't couldn't have known because he was not there. So they only found out through Nekomamushi. Now the thing is, why didn't Nekomamushi and Inoarashi both? went and talked to Whitebeard before. Like, was it because they were supposed to expect for the 20 years stuff? I mean, if you tell me that... I mean, wouldn't it make more sense for them to just go with it? I mean, Whitebeard alone, with all his men, with all the scabbards, like, with all the allies he had 20 years ago, they could have taken Kaido on. They could have freed Wano way before, but I guess then the other scabbards were already gone and Momonosuke was already gone as well. But things could have been different. The scabbards could have arrived at a Wano much better than the one they left and then they would just have to say oh well in the meantime we kind of we kind of clean things up so yeah but Odin would still be dead Toki would still be dead you know what I mean but okay let's let's move forward and uh, ah one thing that I wanted to say the whole thing with the south and east nonsense 
it's because of the orientation of the island. I saw an explanation on Tekking's video about this and it's really just about the orientation of the island. So it's nothing really that weird. It was not a mistake. It's just the way that Wano is oriented is not straightforward as in North South. I mean it is, but it's kind of, Wano is kind of on a diagonal position, sort of, from what I understood. But uh, yeah. We see Denjiro speaking with, uh, meeting with Sasaki. But uh, yeah, Sasaki still thinks, because they don't know that he betrayed them, Sasaki still thinks that he's Kyoshiro. And. He's like, oh, I was not expecting you. What are you doing here? Oh, you know, I was not coming, but let's keep this a secret. This is like, he's like, ah, oh, you snuck in, you. Uh -huh. What happened to your way? And yeah, they they exchange some words. Sasaki explains that that they are after that they are after Yamato. Oda is going to great lengths to hide uh, Sasaki's guilds because i mean for me it's already apparent that he is a a fishman i mean for me at least but oda seems to be going to great lengths to hide his guilds i mean jack is half fishman and he doesn't have guilds from what i remember but sasaki could also be a half fishman for all we know we don't know his color scheme actually so i guess we'll have to wait probably for the next cover of the next volume, which is volume 99, I guess. I don't remember. Let me check real quick. But, um, but yeah, and then then Jiro just goes and um, and locks Sasaki up and shows him the, the, the Kozuki tattoo and apparently he offers to explain the story of Wano. And who knows, maybe maybe they'll manage to get Sasaki on his side. I mean, we gotta remember, Sasaki and who's who, and as a matter of fact, apparently all the other Tokuropo are like this. But I'm gonna talk about Sasaki and who's who specifically. Sasaki and who's who are former pirate captains. They were probably beaten, much like Kid and Hawkins were, and made to join the Beast Pirates. So they owe no specific allegiance to the Beast Pirates. And it shows, it shows when they so willingly took up the offer to defeat, to go find Yamato, to have a chance to defeat the All-Stars to progress. Who's to say that if they're given a chance to betray them, and gain something from it, who's to say they'll not take it? Page 1 and Ulti, I don't see that happening. Black Maria, same. Um, and Diaz Drake, well, it's Diaz Drake. <coughs> but um, Sasaki and who's who? Who's to say that they wouldn't jump at that chance? That's an interesting thing to consider. But let's move on. But I don't think that that's what happened, because they say afterwards that with one of the dangerous Tobiro part of the way, the southern forces split into, like the eastern, to bring themselves closer to Kaido. So, they once again divided. So, we have two teams on the inside, and two teams going from the outside to the back on both sides. And we had the frontal team, which composed of the, the straw hats, and Luffy, Zoro, Kid and Killer on the Vanguard, so... But yeah, and here now comes the funny scene. Uh, so unlike a lot of us were... were considering... Big Mom is not... Um, with amnesia again. She's very well in her faculties. And she's changed chasing the Brachio tank with Chopper and um, and Usopp inside, and they just fired a missile at her. 
So yeah. <laughs> good good thing though is that they ran in the opposite direction, so they gave some room for the alliance to keep moving. So we now have Chopper and Usopp being chased by Big Mom. And then we have Nami, Carrot and Shinobu going after them. But they are found by Prometheus. And Nami's clima attack starts to vibrate because there's a resonance with Prometheus and Zeus. And yeah, we cut that. This chapter was... I don't, I don't want to say an eventful because that's not what happened. This chapter was plenty eventful. But um, there were a lot of cuts. And that's cool because we got to see little snippets of what's happening in each front. We didn't get much out of a specific one. But we, get, we got little snippets out of them. And I think that's cool. So, and then for the last scene of the chapter, we see Ulti and Page One going after, searching for Yamato. Ulti is Ulti, and she is demanding that Page One carries her in the back, which, to which he promptly refuses. And she just goes and chokeholds him to the ground, just demanding him to carry her. <laughs> And they fall in, a, in the stairs just behind a certain someone, Luffy. And in an ever so glorious stare down, Luffy and Ulti face, and this is the namesake of the chapter, Scoundrel meets Scoundrel. Ulti and Luffy are face to face. This, my friends, could be a turnout. Because no one expected this, and we may very well see a fight next chapter. Probably won't happen, but it would be fun to see it happen. And, to cap it all up, the best news. Next chapter hits June 21st. Yes, you heard it right. Next week, One Piece is back. It seems the curse has been broken. And we are now back on normal schedule. Also, there will be an episode starting on June 28th. The anime will be back on June 28th. So, yeah. That, that is it. This was it for this chapter. It was an okay chapter. I'm not gonna say that it was an amazing chapter, but it's One Piece, they're all amazing for starters, but it was a softer chapter, I'm gonna call it like that, it was a, soft, a softer chapter. As I said, we didn't have a big development over less fronts, we got small developments in various fronts. That's what happened, we basically covered every single group in play here, except the big mum pirates and Hiori, but Hiori has been away for quite some time now and it will be a while before she appears again, if ever, if at all, because I don't think, I don't think she will appear in Onigashima of her own volition, like, there's a lot already going on in Onigashima, so I don't think I don't think that it will happen, like, at all, so, but we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. So, my dear friends, my dear viewers, this was it for this chapter, I hope you have enjoyed it, if you have, please leave a like, a comment down below, think, telling me what you think of this chapter, and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile, please do subscribe to the channel, we are very close to our goal of 50 subscribers. Only 5 more to go. We are doing it, we are doing it. I do hope we get to do it. Please check my PlayStation 5 video if you haven't. I released, I released 3 videos last Friday. The two Kingdom Come Deliverance ones, who, which I forgot to, you know, 
upload last Wednesday, so yeah. But please do check that out. I'm really, really looking forward to the PS5 and some of the games they have presented on their reveal stream. Which games you ask? Well, you'll have to see the video to know. But I hope you have enjoyed it, my dear viewers, my dear friends. I say my goodbyes to you. We'll see you tomorrow or whenever you see the next video. I'll see you then. Have a fantastic week and bye-bye.